Most of us in this room will have experienced the pain of divorce ourselves, either in our own lives or in the lives of those around us. It's not just an out there issue. It's an in here here issue. And we as a church must try and wrestle with this in a godly way. See, in Malachi's day, it was predominantly men divorcing their wives. It just seemed to be that way in this culture, which is predominantly linked to the first problem that we looked at, which is the detestable thing, men abandoning their wives to go after pagan uh, wives. But either way, unfaithfulness in their marriages was a deep grief to the heart of God. And so much so, it says that he was no longer willing to accept their temple sacrifices and their prayer. Hear this, church. God never accepts religion as a substitute for obedience. God never accepts religion as a substitute for obedience. And it's very clear in the Old Testament that it's better to obey than to sacrifice. And unfaithfulness in marriage was an expression of unfaithfulness to God, which we've already seen. Marriage was a gift to the Israelites and to us to honor and protect. And as I said earlier, when we mistreat the people of God, we mistreat God. And it's exactly the same here. If we damage a marriage, we damage our relationship with God because marriage is dear to the heart of God. So why is this such a big deal? Why is it such a big deal about integrity in marriage? Well, let's see in verses 15 and 16. We find all kinds of questions around translation and text here, to be honest, but they do give some reasons why it's good to protect our marriages. See, marriage is a covenant, a special uh, relationship based on a promise. And God is the witness to that promise, beginning of verse 14. The Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. So the covenant of marriage is witnessed by God. It's it's meant to mirror the relationship between God and his people. It's a relationship of profound commitment. That's what marriage is meant to be. So to be honest with you, our marriages aren't just about us and our spouse. No, no, no. God is in the picture. He is the witness between us. We make our vows in his presence when we marry. And if we break our vows, we also do that in his presence. He is the witness between us. And then in verse 15, God made us and therefore we belong to him. It says, hasn't God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit, and that's important when we think of marriage. Because what it tells us is that marriage isn't just this commodity that we consume for our own pleasure, but rather it's a holy gift of God to use with care for his glory for the extension of the kingdom of God. So look, if you're here today and your marriage isn't in a great place, let me sensitively and lovingly encourage you not to give up. Invest in your marriage to try and warm it up. Do everything you can. Go to any and every lengths to try and save it because you belong to God. He's the witness of your marriage covenant. 